Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. With the stock markets taking a tumble, people are looking for answers. And one analyst on CNN thinks that Kamala Harris might have spooked the markets. Take a look. Tech is a big part of this story. I said back in March that I thought that AI in particular, which is of the story that's been driving the gains in a lot of those tech stocks, may have been overblown. That's not to say it's not going to pay off, but it's not going to pay off tomorrow. It's not going to pay off next quarter. This is a 10-year story, and I think the markets are starting to recognize that, particularly as earnings come in uh, and there have been some disappointing numbers in, in recent days. Um, we also have an incredibly uh, precarious geopolitical situation out there right now. And and with Kamala Harris making gains now in the presidential race and looking stronger, I think a lot of investors that may have been thinking, oh, I'm going to get a, a Trump 2 administration, maybe there's going to be tax cuts for corporates, they may be rethinking that. So there's just a lot in play. Meanwhile, President Biden appears to think everything's just fine. In fact, when asked recently about his accomplishments as president, he said this. the economy. And the environment. And a few other small things. Oh, so old. It's hard to watch. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's proud of what he's done to uh, save, protect, rebuild the economy. Apparently everything's great. Yeah, whatever term he wants to use. Uh, I think if there's one way to look at what's been happening with the stock market this week, it's that all of the poor fundamentals of the economy have finally caught up to stocks. I mean, the American people have been saying for the past three and a half years that inflation is too high, that they are in jobs that are below their skill level or uh, don't allow them to afford the things that they need to survive, and that generally they feel like they were worse off than four years ago. And sometimes it takes the stock market a little bit of time to catch up. Um, we're finally at that place where the economy fundamentals have not recovered. Jobs have consistently, job growth rather, has consistently been lower than economists' expectations. And this is immediately following the July jobs report, which was really quite bad. We saw uh, the unemployment numbers increase a full percentage point from where they were July of 2023. We also saw that native-born jobs in particular have fallen quite significantly over the past year um, and that a lot of people are still underemployed or have left the job market entirely. It was almost inevitable that the big inflation band-aid that was on the stock market of was course. going to be ripped off. And I appreciate that commentator being frank with Jake Tapper and saying that Kamala Harris's fortunes increasing might mean the fortunes of everyone uh, plummeting if, if investors tech people, businesses, you know, were getting really excited about the tax cuts that Donald Trump had promised. And now instead, we might be getting a president who has, you know, vowed to do um, carbon neutral policy, green energy stuff, uh, vowed to you know, punish uh, more traditional sources of energy, um, who will unleash the FTC and uh, and other federal regulators to micromanage you know vast swaths of the economy in a way that's unfriendly to business and ultimately will make the labor market less good, will drive up prices, will make it more expensive to buy things, and that you know trickles down it does to working people, and so it's uh, it's not great. It's not great, and and also she's overseen as the borders are, which you're yeah. not allowed to call her anymore, as uh, she's overseen. Uh, 10 million plus illegal immigrants come to the country and then has promised to give them all work permits, mm -hmm. which is just subjectively bad for American workers. Is it? I don't think it's bad for American workers. Why is it bad? Why is it not bad to have 10 million people now competing with you for jobs? Well, th I mean... That can work for lower wages and under poor working conditions? But that's how we lower the cost of everything, by having it be provided more efficiently. Yeah, it's bad for the exact person you're competing against, but that's like, you could you could make that argument against anything. We should not, we should forbid cars and make everybody ride around in horses and buggies because that's better for the wheel repair guy. I mean, you know, it's just, it's this, that's protectionism. That's like, we should ban the importation of lumber or metals or resources because it stimulates the economy. It makes more jobs if people have to build all that stuff themselves. They create more activity if I have to like build my own chair. Like that's, you know, that's, the, we end up living but in the past. If what is the limiting principle, though? Because if the argument is that importing foreign workers who work for less, for lower wages, is a spur to the economy and makes goods cheaper, why wouldn't we just replace the entire American workforce with cheaper foreign workers? We should. 
We should do that. I mean, we should allow more people to come in here, work, and thus we make the cost of producing things cheaper. We're not all workers in a specific firm, but we're all consumers of the the food and resources and so products. So how do Americans pay for the cheaper goods if none of them have jobs anymore? Well, then they, but it doesn't end up working that way. They end up getting different jobs or they have more time and freedom to, to start their own companies, to start firms that need higher skilled labor that the immigrants or the lower paid people can't do. I mean, then they advance themselves through the market. That's how it always works. Okay. I think we obviously are not going to be able to get into We fundamentally disagree Yes. On this. I don't think we're going to be able to get into the specifics of immigration policy in this segment, yeah. at least. I know we've talked about it on the show before and certainly will in the future, but agree to disagree on that one. Fair but um, my position would be that Kamala's immigration policy is incredibly damaging to the American worker and is only going to make the economy worse long Long term, especially if, and I think you would agree with this point, that we not only have uh, effectively an open border, but we also have a big welfare state that has given more in American taxpayer dollars to illegal immigrants than many of our working poor class. I don't know if it's giving more or not, but I agree with you that I yeah. don't want, uh, yes, I, I, I don't want people coming in, in here and benefiting from welfare or being, you know, housed by the state instead of working. I don't want them to get benefits the native born population are not getting. In fact, I want to <laughs> make our welfare state less robust and make people, whether native born or whether immigrant, um, work and contribute to the the economy and you know have to pay for themselves. So if they're getting yes, if they're getting disproportionately getting benefits, that's wrong. Or I mean, they should not be getting benefits. So they should be working. And if they want to come here and do that, that's fine. Um, but uh, I, I would agree with that. And I of course agree that Kamala Harris as border czar has been a disaster. And the border is obviously something that a vast number of Americans of both parties are upset about. Um, and uh, they're trying really hard to make you forget in a, almost like a, like a 1984, like torture it out of you in room 101 that she was ever in charge of the border. <laughs> right. It's incredible the lengths they are going to say, no, 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 what borders are? What are you talking about, Amber? I don't <laughs> think that ever happened. It's creepy, it's weird. It is creepy. Um, well, Axios, one of the media outlets responsible for trying to rewrite history there, just announced it's laying off 50 people today. So that's mm. unfortunate. Market forces at work, right? Yeah. Um, but well, probably immigrants are probably coming over. That's and, right. Uh, writing, that's uh, right. Writing misleading <laughs> uh, reporting on what Kamala Harris's job was, so they don't need those. Oh yeah, hey, five cents a word. But yeah. uh, look, one last point I would just make on the stock market question is um, this reporter also pointed out the perhaps overvaluation of tech and AI stocks, which I think is interesting because I'm not sure that they were overvalued, but it is true that stocks like NVIDIA that have grown really rapidly over the past two years were sort of a rising tide that lifted all boats and really helped the stock market in its entirety mm. stay artificially high um, because other stocks that weren't performing as well had this, this overarching benefit of the tech companies. Um, and now that investors have, have seen that over the past two or three years, despite the growth of the tech industry, pretty much every other part of the American economy is very, very sluggish. That's no longer a real selling point for them to keep their money invested. And the tech industry could be, well, the tech industry could face you know, could be targeted under Republican sure. administration. Either well, one, to be yeah, honest. either one. But they, like there was that um, Google decision um, the other day that I'm very, you know, I have some skepticism of big tech. Obviously they're doing things in some cases that I think are bad. A lot of their worst decisions, I'm, I mean, we've now learned were actually motivated by explicit government pressure. But you know, this is a decision where they say that putting the, the, the Google Apple decision. So Google is the default search engine on Apple products and the government saying that's monopoly and coercive. And I'm like, oh, but most people want it to be Google. They don't want to use the other search engine. So what, you're gonna forbid Apple products from having Google as the default search engine? Like, aren't people, like people clearly want Google to be the search engine. I'm, so I'm very skeptical of this kind of stuff, which is gonna, I think, take hold regardless of who's in charge. I'm very, big on anti-monopoly but is it a, well, is it a so. monopoly if they we're gonna oh here's our argument yeah. for the day. how is it a monopoly <laughs> we're if going it's two what, for two immigration <laughs> and monopolies if it's what people want to like the number one search result but if they really want it then Bing wouldn't they be able Google. to but wouldn't they if they really wanted it then that is not an argument for allowing them to make it their own default they are browser instead of forcing it right, you can on go them in and by change apple it. it's not right, a so you can go it. in and change it you well, can do that as a consumer this is the government saying they can't offer this, or honestly, it's not even saying that. They're saying they can't pay Apple 
to be the default one. So what's going to happen is I agree now they're that. just going to get like, it for free. Well, because now because Apple's going to find out all its customers <laughs> want it to be the default search engine. Well, I think the customers can choose, but I think it's it's right in the same way that we shouldn't have CNN paying to be in everybody's airport. You know, mm -hmm. but I mean, the the fundamental problem with Google, from my perspective, is that they have a massive chokehold on the flow of information in our country, um, particularly over their deranking of news websites, in particular, and information related to news, and having them as the default browser without people opting into it at the very least. Right? I think it's fair to say that you should opt in instead of opting out then that that's really bad for our information economy, which is mostly digital at this point. Yes, I just feel like it is, people are opting in because they don't want Bing. And like the number one thing they do on Bing is say, where's but, Google? But people do find that if they use, or at least in surveys, that DuckDuckGo, when people have mm -hmm. both DuckDuckGo and Google, and they use them without knowing what either one of them is, that they actually prefer DuckDuckGo. I mean, that's fine if people prefer it. I just feel like if, if that was, um, if that was, economically viable enough to be the case, then Apple would just do that and then it would not have to um, uh, pay Google for the privilege of, of having the, the search engine be that way, right? But maybe Apple likes Google because they agree in principle, well, yeah. yeah. Maybe, we'll find out. Uh, all right, good debate today, more free media, stick around.